Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode, we are going to be flying the unfriendly skies once again. Dun, 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 dun. Those of you who have seen the movie The Battle of Britain, I'm sure you'll recognize that awesome piece of music as we're going to go through London's Burning, published by Avalon Hill and designed by, I believe, if I remember correctly, um, Ben Knight is the designer from way back in the day. And as you can see here, this is a very well-loved copy of mine. Um, I got this first back in the 90s before I knew about uh, all the uh, other games and game companies that were out there and such. So I played this one to death. Um, if Board Game Geek had existed back then, I probably would have close to 200 plays of this, I bet. I actually ended up with, I have three copies of it. Um, and this one is kind of like my battle-hardened one, but um, I have the other ones too. And I'm just guys kind of showing off this oldie but goodie, so to speak. I haven't broken this one out in a long time. So, Battle Britain, of course, always a, a popular topic. Uh, I have RAF, which, of course, Decision Games version is a revision of the West End uh, version from back in the mid-80s. But this one is a little bit different. This one is kind of an interesting little hybrid. Um, uh, basically... It is the Battle of Britain, and you're trying to keep the Germans from smashing airfields and radar stations and bombing London, of course, hence the title, uh, which gives them victory points at the end of the scenario. And you have three options for scenarios. You can go short, regular, or long. Um, all scenarios begin on the 13th day, 13th day of August, Aldertog, uh, Eagle Day, as it were. And this game is kind of, um, like I said, it's an interesting hybrid, because if you look here on the left... We have this map, which is basically an operational map. It's a map that shows you the different parts of where the battle really took place in the UK here. All right, and you've got your airfields, you've got satellite fields, you've got radar stations, you've got the, the little convoy target over here. And then down here, you have things that give you you know, damage on London and the radar stations, and you've got your calendar. So that's your operational aspect of it. The game itself, more the heart of the game, if you ask me, happens over here on this map. This is basically the tactical map, okay? Here you've got, you can see altitude display, where you intercept the German bombers that are coming in uh, at a, anywhere from ground level all the way up to Angels 30, so to speak. And then you've got the German planes, where you can record... Hits. If we take a look at here at this DO-17, uh, this ni number 19, you can see there's spots for the engine, the pilot, the gunner, and the frame. And then the same thing over here with the British planes. As you can see here, I got lucky. I got a two Spitfire pilots to start the game. Awesome. Okay. And let me come out a little bit. And you can see here that you know, you've know you got your ammunition, your fire, your kills, trying to be an ace, your fatigue, and your altitude. Okay, and then down here you also have combat rounds, victory points, and things like actual altitude of where the enemy is because you never know for sure. And then of course a bailout table if you guys got to go, and wounds, okay, over here. So this is very much a tactical area here, okay. So a game, the game, bleh, let me try that again, tongue's not working so well today. Again, the game is kind of like a microcosm because if you look here at any given time, you only have two RAF pilots in battle. That's right. It's a very different game than a lot of the other ones. You know, every time I think about playing this game and, you know, just the fact that it's like, dude, I only got two pilots. I always think of Robert Shaw at the beginning of the Battle of Britain when they're trying to get uh, refueled and everything and stuff and they find out the Germans have broken through and he's heading over the planes. He's like, well, go with what we got. And I probably don't do him justice there. He's one of my favorite, um, oh, what do you want to say, irascible, crumbrudgingly actors um ever i just you know i really really like him most people know him as quint from jaws but um you know or i guess um i can't think of the character's name in from russia from love but you know i always enjoyed him in a man for all seasons i thought he was perfect as henry the eighth so a little digression there but uh that's basically it so we got two planes so i'm going to take my two spitfires and get them ready to roll 
Okay, now the planes themselves, pretty straightforward stuff here. Okay, each plane has movement ability, that's the white number. The red number is your performance, okay, when you go into aerial combat. And then the two at the top are your guns, your the twin guns there, and that's your hit number um, or less in order to nail the Luftwaffe, the black buzzards that are coming to bomb jolly old England. All right, so as always, let's dive right in and let's roll. Now at the beginning of the game you have to declare base and for some reason, and I, I guess I'm a creature of habit, I've always just put my base up here. You can put your base basically um, almost anywhere um, with, within reason. You can't put it within certain bases like the satellites and stuff, but for some reason I've always gone with Gravesend and that sounds a little morbid I guess, but um, well, you know, I guess it's a message to the Luftwaffe. This is your graves, and this is where you're ending up at here. Okay, so you base your planes there, and that's where they start each turn. Okay, now each turn is divided into a set of phases. Okay, the phases you can see here at the top here with the track. The phases are 7, 10, 2, 7 and 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and then nightfall here. And of course, this little diagram here will be important because this tells you the location of the sun at any given time. And if you can dive out of the sun, of course, there's extra um, modifiers to help you in aerial combat. Okay, so we have our calendar. And again, we're starting on the 13th of August. Everything's ready to roll. So, like I said, like I always like to do with my videos, we just do the immersive method. So we're going to start over here on the operational board because that's where the action is currently, okay? Now, for each phase, you're gonna reach in here and pull out a counter and see what you get. Now, the counters range anywhere from no raid at all to four raiders to five raiders to six raiders and a remix. Remix basically, it means dump all the markers in that you've drawn and draw another one. So let's see what happens here for this first one. Now, before I draw a marker, just to say this, and again, um, you know, I usually don't do this at the beginning of turns, but one thing you can do at the beginning of each turn is you can choose to patrol over any target in um, the UK. So technically I can come down here to Dover, Dover, and patrol over top of that if I wanted to. Now, of course, if the Germans don't show up, then my pilots are getting tired. So I have a tendency to leave them at base until I see what's happening here. So let's check out what's going on first thing in the morning. Whoa, well, the Luftwaffe is ready to roll. Six Raiders are coming at 7 a.m., okay? So once we know how many Raiders there are, then we have to do a couple of different things. First, we've got to find out where they're going to be headed as they enter the UK. So I rolled a five for that. Now if you look at the bottom of the map here where the die is, we'll zoom in some, you can see there's numbers there, numbered one through six. So this tells you where the raid will start and what direction it is going. Okay, you can see for the arrow there. So I'll zoom in on the five a little bit more because that's where we're starting. It's right here. Okay, so the raid marker will be tilted this way okay to indicate that this is where it is going now tilted because you're always going to be aiming towards uh, a vertice of the hex okay and the reason for that is that's connected to the flight plan now the flight plan is down here so when you get ready to actually move you roll six-sided die and as you can see you can see how the plane is pointed there to an angle, not to a side. Then, depending on the die roll, you follow a certain flight path. Now, at the beginning, because the plane is angled, you kind of have to mentally turn this, which can be a little bit challenging. And I still, I'll be honest, I still have trouble with it, uh, doing it. So, uh, there may be mistakes at some point with that, but, you know, hey, do your best and you just keep rolling along, okay? So, that is where the raid will begin. Now, now that we know where the raid is, we're going to find out, supposedly, what altitude is it at. So now, we're going to roll two dice and figure out where is this raid going to be. So I rolled a nine, okay? So when you look at the side here, you can see there's numbers, okay, for each of these, all right? And for this one here, 
I rolled a nine, which means we're coming in at 15,000 feet. That is the reported altitude of the German planes, and there are six of them. Now the German counters look a lot like the British ones in terms of how they're structured. They've got speed, uh, they've got the performance, but they also have a blank side to them, or an unknown side if you will. And this is part of the reason why I ended up buying more copies of the game, because as time goes on, you kind of wear down um, you know, the edges, and you can start to tell who's who, so to speak. So, we're going to take these six bombers, or could be fighters, two, six planes, and we're going to put them face down at 15,000 feet on the board. That is supposedly what we're getting from the plotting groups. Angels 15 is where they're coming in. Okay? Now, now that that's ready, now we'll begin the sequence of movement. Okay? Now, on each turn, the Germans will move at a speed of three unless the raid is revealed to be completely made up of fighters, and then of course they'll move at a speed of four. But when they're face down like that and you don't know, you will always move them at a speed of three. The Germans will fly until they reach the first undamaged target. Once they reach that, then they will drop their bombs and hammer it. Okay? Now, of course, I'm way far away over there at Gravesend, so I mean, I could scramble my planes, but the chances of them not hitting a target are probably pretty slim at this point. So, not patrolling, my choice there was probably not the best idea, but, um, you know, this is a bit of a guessing game, which, of course, in the summer of 1940, it was very much that, with radar being in infancy and such. So, if you choose to move British planes, you can move them for spaces, but also you can change altitude, and that costs you movement points to do that as well. And you can never change more than two levels on a single turn. So what I think I'm going to do for this part is I'm just going to focus on the German raid to show you how that works, because my guys are so far away, the chances of them catching the Germans, plus they're six, which means I don't know what's there. Is it six bombers? Is it three bombers and three fighters? Is it two bombers and four fighters? Or is it five fighters and one bar? You get the idea. So let's just see what happens here with the mighty German Luftwaffe. So roll this first die here and it is a six. Okay. So again, we're focusing on the operational board here and we rolled a six. Now by our diagram, six is basically three hexes to the right. Okay. Uh, in a straight line is basically where it's going to end up going here. Okay, so with that in mind, and again, you kind of have to turn things here to um, to kind of imagine how this is how this is going to be looking and all. Okay, so they're going to go ahead and actually come out here towards. They should be. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. What am I doing here? There we go. Okay, so they're actually going to go out towards the edge of the board because these two here are going to be up front now, which again, with the diagram, and you kind of have to tilt it, you know, they would be going three to the one side uh, as opposed to in a straight line. Again, to me, the diagram is the most challenging part of this game. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I might screw this up. I always have trouble with it. I'll be completely honest. So... So this is the way it should be. Here's the middle line. So here is the side with the six, and it should be three out. So they're going to fly actually out to the edge of here, and then they will pivot and go up. So for some reason, they skirted the English Channel. I'm not exactly sure why they did that. Okay, And you do follow that flight pattern, and there is a good example um, of play, which shows you, you know, initially how that goes uh, as far as... Uh, the flight path itself is concerned um, with that first movement that the Germans do. And again, that's one of the trickier things, if not the uh, trickiest thing to me, as far as like, you know, how they're moving and which way they go and, and things of that nature and stuff. Okay. So now I might actually have time to scramble, but I'm still going to sit still and wait and see what they do. Let's see which way they go now. All right, so this time they rolled a five. Now five is basically two to the right and then up one. So now they could be closing in on the convoy. Let me come out here some more. 
So I'm not sure still what they're up to. Let's see, should I scramble? You know what, I think I am gonna scramble just to show y'all how it works, okay? So here I go, I've got my guys at base. So since I'm scrambling them, and I'll just focus on Spitfire number two here, when you scramble, you will increase the fatigue level for each pilot. And when you scramble, on the turn you scramble, you can only go to the ground level. That's as high up in the air as you can get, okay, on that first one. Now after that, I'll have four movement points that I can either change altitude up to two levels, or I can move uh, four hexes uh, in a given direction. And again, you're going to be pointed at a certain angle because that's going to make a difference when it comes to uh, the sun, okay? So I've scrambled them. So let's see what happens here now with the raid. Which way is it going to go? Well, there's only so many options here. And when you hit the edge of the board, you basically just keep skirting the edge there too. Okay, but they actually rolled a two, which goes one, two, and then comes in one. So they are continuing to head inland. Interesting. All right. Well, let's see here now which way we're going to end up going next. Now, I've got my British planes here, okay, and I can go ahead and start to move them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump my guys up two levels to Angels 10, and I'm going to move them one, two, this direction here, and I'll have them facing uh, down this direction because I'm kind of waiting to see which way the Germans are going to go. And they rolled another six. So that's three to the right, one, two. Now I'm on the edge, so I have to basically skirt the edge and come up. All right, now I have a chance here. I could go ahead and try to get in position to get ready to jump them, because supposedly they're 15,000 feet. Now the risk here is that when the real altitude is revealed, if it turns out that they are two levels below me, you basically miss each other. So that is a bit of a gamble here. So what I think I'll do is I think I will jump up one level and let's see. Now for the sun, I'd have to be coming from this angle here and I just can't do that right now. But for the purposes of this video, just to show how it works, I'm just going to go up to one level to 15,000 feet. Now, you know what? I'm going to go up two levels to 20,000. I'm worried about fighters because there's six planes. There's got to be some fighters. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly over here, one, two into this space and basically wait on them, wait for them to come to me, so to speak. Okay, and the next roll is another five. So that would actually be three this way, so one, two, three. So they're really going deep into here. Interesting. All right. Now, I'm at 20,000 feet. I have four movement points. And now that they're over here, I could fly behind them and basically jump them from the seven o'clock angle if, oh no, actually I can't. Oh, no, actually I cannot because there's no hex here. Dang it. All right, well, you know what? I don't want them to try and bomb the target because when they bomb the target, that's how they get their victory points. Plus shooting down, of course, my planes. So I'm gonna go ahead and engage. So I'm gonna move one, two, and we're coming in at 20,000 feet as opposed to 20,000 leagues. So once you intercept the raid, then you go back to the tactical board. So here we are at the tactical board. Okay. Now, as you can see, there's my two guys, my two Spitfire pilots, ready to engage the Germans. But now the big mystery. What is the real altitude of the raid? Where are they? Well, let's find out. It is a seven. So good news and bad news about a seven. Okay on the true altitude table, which is right over here off to the side. So there's no change for the Raiders, okay? But there is top cover. All fighters are gonna be up at 20,000 feet. So let's find out just how much trouble I'm in. Uh-oh, uh-oh, okay, bomber, flying pencil. Uh-oh, pencil, pencil. Okay, well, I'm not as bad in trouble as I thought I was gonna be. So, we're all going to engage each other here at the 20,000 foot level, okay? So, now, one of the things you have to check on here is there is the possibility of having a head-on encounter. Um, it doesn't happen very often, 
but it does happen at times. So I just want to double check and make sure. I don't think I've had a head on one. Um, when I played this the other day, I played a short scenario and I got crushed because I just was a bit too, um, yeah, um, I was just a bit too, how should we put this, um, uh, okay, well we didn't uh, enter exactly opposite so it is not going to be a head-on situation here that's the opposite part there okay so basically now my guys will pick two targets to go after here so we'll go after one ME109 and we'll go after this ME109 and then of course this one will be hanging out and we begin the combat round so the combat round is measured over here and at the end of each combat round you have to roll die to see if combat continues onward Okay, so with combat, it's pretty straightforward stuff here for the most part. Okay, we'll start with Spitfire number one. So you're going to compare the performance value of each plane, which is the digit in red. They both have six, and you're going to add that to the roll of a single die. Okay, now there are modifiers, okay, for the attacker's roll besides the printed performance value. Plus two if you dove out of the sun, nope. Plus one if you dove, nope. Minus two if you climb to attack, nope. Minus if you're tired, and minus one if you're hit on the frame. Well, none of that is true right now. Now, for the enemy, again, plus their performance value, which is going to be plus six, plus per one unengaged enemy friendly fighter at the same altitude. Now, that's where we're going to have a little bit of a problem, because remember, there are three ME-109s. So there is one over here that is unengaged right now. So that is a bit of a problem for my uh, RAF boys here, okay? And then plus one if it's a bomber and they already dropped their bombs, which is not the case here. And again, pilot's tired or hits on the engine pilot or frame from a previous attack. All right, so we're going to roll a single die for each plane. And basically we're looking to see who rolls higher here to see who's going to outmaneuver who. Okay, so, so I rolled dice using gray for the Germans here. So six and four is 10, six and two is, well, six and two plus one more, that's nine, okay? Now for every difference, this is a difference of plus one, you will get a chance to shoot a burst of ammunition, okay, at the enemy. Now, your ammunition is limited, as I showed you before on the chart, so you have to be careful how many bursts you're going to fire. And of course here, I can only fire one because the difference ended up being 10 to nine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fire that one burst, and I'll record it up here, dropping myself from 15 seconds to 12 seconds, and remember, the gun numbers here are the four, so I'm trying to roll a four or less for each one. And what did I get? Well, let me show you. I got a five and a two. So the five is a miss, the two is a hit. So for every hit that you score, you then roll damage to see what part of the plane that you hit. Now this is ME109 number seven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to the chart and find ME109 number seven, which is right here. And we're gonna find what kind of damage we're about to do onto it. And again, if you notice, look at the discoloration. Again, it's just, I've had this for, well, almost 25 years, so. All right, I rolled a three, okay? So, a three is the pilot. So you have damage markers that are two-sided. One is a hit, and the other one is when it's destroyed. So I'll put that hit there on the pilot, and that's good, because hitting a pilot is important because there are things that will make the enemy planes break off, or, of course, cause you to break off as the game goes on. So, this is good news for me. That was very fortunate and very lucky with the die roll that was there. So let's go back down, here we go, and we'll go to Spitfire number two. So again, it's basically the same thing. Each roll on a die, and again, the Germans get plus seven added to their die versus the plus six for the British. Oh, well, I must be, <laughs> my little man and I um, have been playing that uh, Thanos Rising game, uh, which is based on the Marvel Infinity Wars movie, and we had horrible luck today. We lost twice playing today. He's uh, he's three. He rolls the dice. 
um, for me, and then he's helped me, helps me make decisions. I'll be like, so should we fight villains? Should we recruit stuff? We just had horrible luck today. So I guess this is balancing it out, because look at this. So 6 and 6 is 12. 6 and 1 is 7. Plus one more for the unengaged fighter, that's 8. So that gives me a difference of 4. Oh, <laughs> that was too giant. Four, baby. So I can put up to four bursts into the enemy. But what I'm going to do is, and hoping that I can maybe destroy this thing, I'm going to put two bursts in. And remember, I'm trying to roll. For each burst, I get to roll two dice because I have two gun numbers there. And I'm trying to get four or less. So, first burst. Little sound effects there for you. <laughs> Oh, not too shabby, not too shabby. So, I rolled two fours, a two, and a six. Well, the six is no good. As Linda Ronstadt would say, you're no good, baby, you're no good. But I get three hits on the German ME109 number six. All right, so, let's see how those three hits make. On the 109 number six, which is up here, right next to the number seven. Okay, so I rolled a six, a five, and a four. So that would be one hit on the pilot for the four. Six and five, you can see there, is the same spot. So that's the frame. So bam! Blow that ME109 out of the sky. All right. So that's that. He's down for the count. He is gone. Thanks for playing. Here's some nice party gifts for you. Now, what I'll do over here is, first of all, for my Spitfire number two, I will give him a kill. When I get to five, then he becomes an ace. You flip over the planes, and that's the ace side there. And the other thing I get to do now is, here on the victory point track, get my first victory point of the game. Okay? All right. Now, after the British, who are intercepting, of course, now if the Germans intercepted first, they get the first crack of this. But since it was me intercepting them, rather than them running into me, now the Germans will get a chance to fire back and attack. So each one of these German planes, of course, will now go after one of the Spitfires. So we're going to repeat the procedure, except now, of course, naturally enough, what we'll end up doing is we will be adding the numbers and seeing if the Germans can get position to get some shots off. So let's go with Spitfire number one. Okay. So these are the same numbers. So six and four is ten. Six and three is nine. So they did get a difference of one. So they will get one burst on the Spitfire. So they rolled a six and a two. Now, again, they have guns that are twin fours. So the six misses, but the two is going to score a hit. So let's see what that hit is. Ah, all right, let's go over to Spitfire number one up here. Sorry about moving around so much, but again, this is this game has two boards, so you, know, you kind of almost have to move around some because otherwise, um, you know, you can't really show the game. All right. So Spitfire number one, it was a roll of a three. So unfortunately, that means it hits my pilot. Oh no! So that's bad news because now basically he's going to have to you know, go down. He's going to have to go out of the fight, okay? Now, granted, it's not like he has to bail out, which is another whole separate issue. He'll be able to do, as the term is, pancake, you know, if he can get to the closest field, wherever that happens to be. Unfortunately, being way over in the eastern end of Essex, there's not a whole lot of airfields nearby, so that's a little concerning, okay? So let's go back over here to the battle board, and we'll do Spitfire number two. All right, so... Here we go again. Same deal. Or Spitfire number um, number five is the one that we're we're doing. Oh, that was Spitfire number two. That wasn't number seven. Why did that look like a seven to me? Oh, 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 oh! 
oops, he had, he had a pilot hit. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> whoo, it has been a while since I really have played this. Okay, for some reason I was thinking he had a frame hit, so I apologize. This is the kind of things that can happen, I guess, you know, when you play solitaire. You know, sometimes you just, you think one thing, you think another. So with his pilot hit, he would have to break off and basically head for home. Okay, and that's what he's going to do. So, good news for us is, that means our RAF pilot is A-OK. -okay. Ding! So, glad I caught that in time. I'm probably sure some of you watching the video were like, Dude! It's the pilot's hit! What are you doing? I fixed it. <laughs> to quote Jeff Spicoli, I can fix this! So, now, let's go on here to ME 109 number 5, which was not hit. And let's roll and see what kind of situation we're going to have there. Okay, so, similar to what just happened. So 6 and 2 is 8. But, now I do have an unengaged Spitfire here. Okay, because this guy did not... Um, does not have an enemy plane there with him. So actually, this is going to be plus one. So no firing ability. You must have greater than zero. So this is basically going to be eight to eight. So the Germans could not get position and they could not fire. Woohoo! Now, at the end of every round of combat, you got to find out if there's another one. Okay? Because right now, of course, yes, that was good. I shot down a fire plane. But those bombers are still on their way to the target. And they still have all their bombs. So, let's see here now if we have another round of combat. Now, here, let me zoom in, it says that combat ends on a roll of one. Well, I just rolled a four. So, guess what? I'm in good shape for another round. So, we slide this up and we get ready for another round of battle. Man, I can't believe I thought that two was a seven. I... Whew, I'm getting old. <laughs> My eyes are... Yikes. Yeah. Mm. Alright, so let's come back over here to the tactical board now. Alright, so now I've got a Spitfire here that is dealing with this ME-109. So I'm going to go ahead and let that continue to go on. But I'm going to take my other Spitfire and I'm going to dive and try to destroy that bomber. Okay? So let's see how that goes in battle there. Now, I am diving this time, okay, on a plane that the enemy does have a full bomb load there. And as you can see, the performance number is not very good. It's only a one, okay? So I'll get plus six, plus seven versus plus one. Hokey spoons. All right. Well, as you might expect, I rolled a six, they rolled a two, so I can put up to three bursts into them, okay? Now, of course, I've already used up some of my ammo, but I'm going to put two bursts into them and see if I can shoot down this flying pencil here. Okay. So, let's see what happens. So, I rolled a pair of threes. That's good. That's two hits. Man, I'm dropping dice tonight. Ah, reminds me of some of my chest days when I used to drop pawns left and right. Yeesh. And I rolled another three and a two, so that is four hits with my two bursts. And again, I'll just move my ammunition down by two more. And let's see how this goes with my four hits. So how did I make uh, well, 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 well. All right, and the more words of James Brown. Well, 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 well. Let's go over here to number 16. Okay, so I got a hit on a one. I got a hit on a two. I got a four, which is the gunner, and I also hit the frame. So notice, I wasn't able to bring this bad boy down. All right, well, that sucks. Four hits, and he's still up in the air. Feels like the Godfather. Five bullets, and his thick Sicilian high, and he's still alive. Yeah, well, that's the way this flying pencil is, okay? Now, we'll find out the fate of it here in just a moment. Uh, after we get finished with the rest of this combat round here when the Germans take um, their turn. Now, since it is a bomber, it does have a rear gunner, so he'll get a chance to shoot with his rear gun. And he needs a one to hit, and they rolled a two, so not surprisingly, they missed. 
All right, now we've got our other fighter battle to do here, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so again, this is basically going to be a straight up die roll. So whoever rolls the higher, because they both get plus six, is going to have it. Whew. Seriously, seriously, all that bad luck from earlier today, man. We had such bad luck with the die rolls. Thanos got one of the stones, and then my little man kept rolling that color, and it's just like, oh, you can't remove damage from heroes. What? Not good, but look at this. It's making up for it tonight. Look at that. I got a six. Six and six is 12 to seven plus five. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, this is... Fighter number two. I only got three bursts left, and I would like to try and get one of those bombers. So I'm only going to put one burst into them. That's all I'm going to do. There, see, quick burst. Oh! And look what happened. It's a six and a five. I missed. How could you miss? Ah, oh, frustrating. So that's one of the challenges of this game. It's kind of like... You know, sometimes you're like, I don't want to put a whole lot of bursts in because I want to save my ammo. But at the same time, if I gamble like I just did and I miss, then this guy's still flying around all over the place. Ah. So, Germans chance. Now, before we go ahead with the Germans dance chance, let's talk about that bomber that had two hits on it. Now, when a plane has an engine hit for the Germans, then you count the number of altitude spaces in this case 15,000 so that's one two three four spaces before they reach ground level and crash okay so if the Germans are close enough to home that they can fly and get back they land safely in this case because they're out in the middle of BFE in England this guy is going to crash so what does that mean that means another victory point for me and another kill for the RAF. All right. So that's good news. But now we got to go deal with this fighter. Pro I can't believe he missed. Uh, how could you miss? It's like, uh, should have been like shooting ducks in a barrel, you know? All right, let's see if this, let me see if this is for real or not. Let me see if my luck actually holds up on this. Here we go. Well, it does. So, again, Six and three is nine, six and three is nine. So you must have at least a plus one margin to get a shot off. So the Germans were not able to get position and get a burst off, okay? So now we're gonna see if there's another round of combat. Now the ground combat rounds basically have a press your luck element to it. So let's see if we get another combat round, okay? And in this particular case, we rolled a two. So on a roll of one or two, combat is over. Womp, womp, womp. All right, so my guys have to break off and then find some place to land, okay? Now, I'm gonna land, obviously, somewhere where uh, I don't think the Germans are gonna bomb, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fly my guys, and since they're not damaged, again, if they were damaged, it would be like the German planes. You have so many hexes to reach an airfield. But since they're not damaged, I'm gonna go ahead and fly here back to base and just park there. And now we'll finish off with the Germans up here. Now, because the German raid marker is on the edge of the board, there's really no point in rolling the die because they're going to have to go. And as you can see, there's black arrows there at the top. So when you reach the edge, you would just go across. But they will fly to here, reaching this first undamaged target. Okay? And now the German planes will drop their bombs. Now, in this particular case, each one... And I'll just show you here to make it easier. Each one of the DO-17s, you can see, has one bomb symbol. So basically, it would be two points of damage on it. Now, there are anti-aircraft guns. There's the big ones that can subtract one off the dam damage roll. And then there's smaller ones, which, at a lower level, the light anti-aircraft fire, basically 5,000 feet in ground level, would reduce it there. But here, the Germans are still going to get two points worth of damage. So we find one of our damage markers. As I can find it here. There we go. And inflicted there. Now, since the British, we had to break off and it's done, you can basically do what I just did. Just pick up the raid marker, put the German planes that were undamaged back into the pool of German aircraft, and now you're ready to do the next phase. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, the Germans get points to replace their aircraft, and uh, the British 
get points too. And the British can use their points to either replace aircraft or repair bomb damage on targets. So now, of course, we would go on to the 10 a.m. phase. We'd shake up the raid markers, reach inside, and we'd find, whoops, that's upside down, no raid. So no raid for 10 o'clock, and we move on to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, since it looks like the chances of a German raider becoming smaller and smaller, what I'm going to do for the 2 o'clock one here is, or since I know that the chances, I guess I shouldn't say it that way, basically, um, I know my pilots won't get too badly fatigued because at the end of the day, pilots do recover fatigue levels um, on their chart. Of course, as the fatigue gets higher, they get tired. But since the Raiders may be coming, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fly down here on patrol over Hawkins and I'm going to go up to 15,000 feet. So at Angels 15, fatigue level 2, because that's the second time my boys are up in the air today, we're going to fly patrol. Let's see if it's worth it. Survey says, sorry, it sounds like a bunch of steam escaping. Oh, survey says remix. Okay, so when you get the remix marker, I take the two markers I already drew, the six and the raid, put everybody back into the cup, and draw again. And there will be four raiders that will be coming on this raid. And again, just follow the procedure, find out where they're going to start. This time they're going to start in hex 3, which means they're going to be heading this direction here to start the game. So we'll see which way they go over there. And again, we check the altitude. I rolled a 7, so it's Angels 15. And again, we shake up the counters and put them down, etc. for the game and continue on with the raid, which obviously, since four is the fewest amount of planes, I will want to go ahead and engage, okay? Now, I don't want this video to run too long, and I just want to give you, again, as always, just a feel what the game's like. Um, this game, again, has been out for a while. Um, some people really like it, some people don't like it. I admit, I don't play it as much as I used to. Um, this is the first time i played this game since 2015, I believe. That's one nice thing I like about Board Game Geek is recording plays, you can go back and see, you know, like, dude, how long has it been since i played game A? And, you know, if it's been like, oh, forever, why am I still holding on to it? Should I get rid of it? Should I trade something for it? Which actually is the smartest thing to do, because then you get something you're interested in and get rid of something you're not. So, this one, though, I, I have a lot of nostalgia for, because this was my first Solitaire game. Um, and again, I played the heck out of this thing. I mean, here, I'll show you. I played the heck out of this thing so bad, and this is my original game board, by the way, that if you take a look here, I'm going to zoom in. See the, see the marks at ground level in Angels 5 and Angels 10? That's from wearing, because, you know, pushing the marker back and forth. That's how much I've worn that down. So, okay. And again, um, you know, if I made mistakes on the initial raid movement and stuff, um, I've, I've tried my best to stick to what the example of play shows here. Okay. Um, let me just show you that here. As you can see, you know, it's tilted this way. Um, and then it goes off on flight path number four. So, um, yeah. So when it comes onto the board there, um, it's, um, it's, it's just a little odd um, at the beginning. But one other thing I'll mention too before I, I end this video is if you do enjoy this, you need to check out um, the issue of the general here. What number what is this? Number, number 31. Um, vol or volume 31, number 2. Because inside they have some stuff and they also have... For those who can't play the game long or have it set up for long, there's a bunch of 30-second um, um, scenarios, like one raid, basically, um, that you can play. So you can check that out. Um, and then there's also an issue, and I'm not sure if it's this issue or another one, where they had um, the Defiant Fighter, which is available, which I have, but of course I did not put in as part of my um, 
reserves and stuff. But you can do that. Uh, it's interesting. And then you just use one of the Stukas, the JU-87s, for the frame um, for that. So, to put a period onto a sentence there. Yeah. All right. So, that gives you an idea of London's Burning and how London's Burning is, uh, is played. So, next time, I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. Um, I know I mentioned B-17 Flying Fortress Leader. Uh, I still am contemplating that idea, but I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, I've been working more on some games with my little man because now he's expressed uh, more of an interest. And, you know, he has been rolling dice for me before for some other games and stuff. But this one, he's, you know, this one, he's almost three and a half. He, he's really kind of engaged with this time. He's very interested. Um, you know, he's he's looking at things with me and, you know, I'm, I'm like I'm making him part of the decision-making process because that would be awesome if he and his brother, who is only eight months right now, um, Someday would be gamers too, because my wife and I are gamers. Although my wife's not a war gamer, um, unless you count History of the World and Twilight Struggle. So let's not get into that debate about the second one. I think History of the World is a war game, because you've got armies. You roll dice to fight. You conquer places. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That sounds like a war game to me. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, well, hopefully, you know, someday we'll all be able to do some, some gaming together. That would be totally... Awesome, especially as an alternative on a rainy day to you know screen time, which kids just have too much screen time anymore. Whew. I think we all have too much screen time anymore. But that's another story for another time. Coming from a man who's making videos for other people to watch, but you get my point. Um, you know, it's like Jean Paul Sartre said. You know, too much of anything is is hell. You know, you may like ice cream, but you know, too much of it is you know, it's you know. Too much ice cream is just ridiculous. Nobody would eat ice cream three times a day, you know. That just wouldn't happen. So, and even then, you would get sick of it, so, etc. I'm sure I mentioned Sartre before, because I find him a very interesting philosopher for a variety of reasons. But that's that's a different video, a different series, so to speak. So, uh, I hope you like this quick little look at London's Burning, um, which is an oldie, but a goodie. And, um, like I said, next time I'm hoping maybe Flying Fortress Leader, if not... Uh, I have no idea. It might be something from somewhere. There's a shocker on the Eastern Front. So, you know, because I do have things that I haven't um, shown yet that I have, like the Moscow option, and I have um, uh, I have those intro games too, like Objective Kiev and, and Target Leningrad and stuff that I've thought about uh, highlighting. Or the Turning the Table system, uh, which is another good option and possibility too. So, anyway... I'm sure I'll pick one of those. And eventually later this year, <clears throat> excuse me, you all can be on the lookout for my Kiev 41 um, video, which will definitely be out about as quick as I can figure out how to play it, which shouldn't take too long because, I mean, you know, it's it's the same system as Moscow and Leningrad 41, which, of course, I have both of those. Um, and I'll get that out as soon as it gets in my hot little hands, which will be later this year. October, I believe, is what it says on the Kickstarter, is the estimated shipping, which last time they were spot on. But they're shipping for um, uh, Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga. So, thanks for hanging out with me, flying the unfriendly skies. This is Tim Korshnoy for Bare Bones Wargaming, saying thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time, either for more unfriendly skies um, or from the Eastern Front. Pacific Theater is probably not likely because I'm kind of. I kind of shot my bolt on that for a while now. I uh, got my fill, so to speak. So, so, thanks again for watching. See you next time.